All right, guys. So this morning in the BRICS Facebook community, there was some custom code shared for outputting your categories as a unordered list uh, where you can style each of the category links uh, based on their category name or category ID. Um, my first impression when I looked at it is that you don't need custom code for this. As much as I love custom code, and I love, anyone who knows me knows I love coding, um, you don't need custom code to do that in Bricks. And that's one of the brilliant things about Bricks is the way that it handles dynamic data and loops. There's a lot of the stuff that you think you might need custom code for, you can actually do natively in Bricks. I'm going to show you how that works. Uh, and also, the other thing is that uh, as we journey through trial and error and looking at what other people do and whatnot, we come to standards on how we work. So I want to show you how I would do this based on the standards that I've come to on how I work, uh, on how I where I put my styles, um, how I style things, and uh, all that sort of stuff. So, without any further ado, I have a raw site where I've got uh, basic. Uh, it's just basically a, a blueprint starter site. Uh, I do have automatic CSS, which I'm not going to use for this example, and I do have advanced Thema, which I use for my productivity. Uh, and everything I do with advanced schema you can do manually, but it just saves some time. So uh, I will be using that. So we've got the three categories, A, B, and C, and we're also going to categorize as our default. So I'm going to go to my pages, and I've got a blank home page here. And on that home page, I'm just going to create a unordered list of my categories, and then show you how to style that up. So I'm just going to use AT to create a section. In that section, I'm going to add a block. And inside that block, I'm going to add another block. I'm going to call this my cat uh, style uh, list. And we're going to call that an item. And let's stick a text link inside there. And we'll call that our cat link. OK. Now that's our structure. So now we need to just create some uh, classes for that so we can style it nicely. Uh, I'm going to use the AT BEM converter. So I'm just going to right click and go class converter, create classes. All right, that's created all of my BEM classes for me. As long as you name these well, uh, then your classes will be named well as well. So my cat style element has now got the class up here of cat styled list. My item has the block name with two underscores item, which is my element of item. And I've got an element of cat link, all created for me in a single right click and create classes. OK, so now we're going to use another AT feature, which is these tags. Uh, so I'm going to double click on that so you see the colors of them. And I'm going to click on my cat styled list. And I'm going to change that to a UL. Click on my item. I'm going to change that to an ally. You can just click on these and then go over to the left hand side, change your HTML tag. This is just another shortcut, which is great uh, quality life stuff from Automatic Thema. All right, now on the item, we're going to turn that into a loop. And this is where the custom code that was put up there was, was running a custom PHP function to go off and generate a UL with allies and, and dynamic data. You don't need that. Okay, so we're going to create a query here. We're going to use our terms. Uh, and we're going to set our categories from posts. Uh, now, I haven't added this cate these categories to any posts, so it's not going to show here. So I need to just check this uh, switch here to show empty items. Okay, and we've got four categories. So we've got the category A, B, and C, and untitled. So that so uncategorized, I say. Uh, so we've got four there. All right. So go to our cat link, our dynamic data for our title, and we're going to put the term name. And we're going to link to the uh, dynamic data of the term. Uh, where is it? Term, 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 term. Archive. There we go. Term archive URL. So we've got the dynamic data as our term name and our archive URL. So we've got our links done. Save. And have a look at the front end of what we've got so far. And there's our front end. So we've got our UL with our cat styled list. We've got an ally with cat styled list item. And we've got a anchor tag with cat styled list cat link. 
all right so we're off and cooking and you notice there's some spacing in here uh, that is automatic CSS in the late, one of the latest uh, updates in version 3 where they by default and again I've got ACS installed with its default settings I have not changed anything yet you can turn this off uh, my preference is to turn it off because I prefer to add spacing and uh, and layout as I go rather than have to try and remove it um, because it's been automatically added to everything. Um, that's just my preference. That's not saying there's anything wrong with it. That's just my preference. So anyway, uh, what we're going to do is on our uh, item. Now, there's a number of ways you can do this. Uh, my preference is to not use the Bricks UI, is to use the style um, using the uh, CSS. And the reason for that is it just keeps it all in the one place. So you can see in here, if I just do a root block and I get rid of my padding to zero and my margin zero, that's got rid of all of my padding and margin from my UL because uh, my cat styled list, my top level block is actually the UL. Okay, so we've got rid of all that. And we're going to set our row gap on here to be uh, one REM. Okay, so we've got rid of the, just get, just overriding the default. Uh, there you go, a bit of a delay in the editor. Uh, just overriding the default that automatic CSS is putting in there because I don't want that big spacing for my list. Um, and the cool thing of doing it here, it's just so simple to do, right? Rather than going through and finding, okay, where's my margin, where's my padding? Uh, where's my row gap? Where's my, you know, just put it all in the one place. And that's much easier for me to work that way. All right. Now, what we want to do is we're going to set some, this is my standard operating procedure. We're going to set some defaults. So we're going to go a uh, default variable would be a, what do we want? The item background. Okay, the item background, we're going to just do a, I don't know, hash F, uh, 5f5f5, five, 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 so like a gray, uh, and we're going to go item, uh, actually it's going to be the link we're going to look at, so we're going to look at the cat link, uh, color, black, and the cat link, uh, font weight, of normal, Okay, so what we're doing this as variables, and I'll show you why. Um, and the way I name these is the element name. So my item is my element of item. My uh, cat link is my uh, my link here, and then the actual property that I'm going to assign this to. It's just to keep track of my variables. Okay. Now down in here, I'm going to now target the item. And we're going to set the background to be a variable of item background. Okay, so we've got a background on our uh, default on our item up here. And it's just not rendering exactly as I'd expect it to in the editor, but that's typical of the editor. So, um, all right, now we now want to target our roots. Uh, and our cat link, and we want to set our, uh, we'll be setting the color to the variable of cat link color. Wish this autocomplete would work in here. This is an advanced SEMA superpower PSS, CSS. I wish the autocomplete would work for the variables in here as well, but it doesn't, unfortunately. And we're going to use our font weight of uh, font weight okay done so that is that part done now if we have a look at the front end here and we look at our item what we could call from that is we put a how actually have we done it yet no we haven't sorry i've got it now add with one step i missed sorry um, we want to go now to our, on our items, we want to go to our attributes, and we want to add an attribute, we'll call this data of category, and we're going to use a dynamic 
value here, which will be our term. And I'm going to use the term slug. You could use the name, the ID, etc. I'm going to use the slug because the slug is sanitized. So if we use the name and there's special characters in the name that break our CSS, we're in trouble. Uh, if we use the ID, it's just a number. It's hard to read in the CSS what it is. The slug is all lowercase, special characters or spaces are all replaced with a uh, blank or with a dash. So we know that this is going to be usable without causing problems with our CSS. So I'm going to use the term slug. Uh, save that and let's have a look back at our front end again. We have a look now on our category, sorry, on our first list item, we've got a data category of category A, second one's category B, second one's category C. I'm going to grab that whole data property there, go back to the builder. Now we can go to our CSS. And this is where it's cool using these uh, using variables. It makes the styling so much easier. So I'm going to now do a root for item, which has the data category A. And we're just going to override those variables. So I'm just going to grab those variables there. And we're going to make the background for that one green. Uh, link color yellow and let's make the font weight bold okay save that now let's have a look at the front end our category a has a green background uh, with a link color having yellow and the style being bold let's have a look at category b so we just grab the declaration there put it down there and we say category b And let's make that a, I don't know, purple and white and bold. Oops, I've done the wrong one. I've just changed the first one, not the second one. So purple, white, okay. So we just changed category A and category B. And now we've got purple with white and bold on the category A. And if we have a look at the CSS for it, let's have a look at the background there. We can see that these variables have been overridden because whoops get back to the elements there those variables have been overridden because that list item has data category set to category a the second one here uh, these variables have been overridden because we've got our uh, list item with the data category category b so that's a really easy way to target your css uh, just by using the slug. This could be for terms, for posts, for whatever you want. It could be the user um, ID or the username or, or whatever it is. You can style things differently um, based on those data attributes that you add there. Uh, the key takeaway for me here is the way we lay the CSS out. I normally have a, call this my settings block. The settings block, which is on the uh, BEM root or the or the B part of the BEM. That's my settings. And this is my application of those settings. And then that's those there. And then we've got our overrides down here. Okay. Now the overrides could also be hovers. And so let's have a look at a, one of these. Uh, I'm going to grab the same declaration. Uh, and I'm going to put the category A when we're hovered. And all I want to do is change the background. So I'm not going to change the variable there. We just change the background to, I don't know, pink. Uh, hover changes to pink. So the really cool thing about doing it this way is this becomes really readable. You know, this is not a bunch of CSS rules, you know, overriding these rules up here or these rules here every time something changes. It's basically set some property variables, I, call, I think you'd call them, or local scope variables, whatever you like to call them, and this override the variables based on your variations for 
whether it's got a data attribute, whether it has a, an extra class, uh, whether you've got a pseudo state like hover, focus, focus within, whatever, you're just overriding some variables. So that is my go-to on how I work and how I would have output this uh, category list rather than using custom code to do it. So I'm going to leave it here. Hopefully that is useful to someone somewhere and uh, I'll leave it there. Thanks guys.